It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 2054, How to Complain Less and Appreciate More by Rachel Jones of nourishingminimalism.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, your personal narrator, where I get permission from the authors of the best blogs I can find on personal development, minimalism, productivity, anything they think will help you live a more meaningful life. And then I simply read their content to you for free. It's like a big free audiobook. If you like the show, please share it with friends and family. I really mean that. If everybody shared it, this would be going on forever. So it really means a lot. And you can do that in person or on social. And tag me if you do that on social because sometimes I'll send a book to someone who shared it with a bunch of people. Now today I have a brand new author for the show. I'll tell you more about Rachel right after the reading. So for now, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. How to Complain Less and Appreciate More by Rachel Jones of nourishingminimalism.com. Unless you are someone who is really introspective, most of us don't pay attention to whether we are constantly complaining or expressing appreciation. We don't notice what we say and what we think about because we're used to the way we are and it seems normal. We can focus on the negatives in life and not even realize that is what we are doing. How we respond to situations around us is often automatic and often learned at a very young age, which is why if we are someone prone to complaining, it feels so normal. How do we know if we complain a lot? All change starts with paying attention. Because our outlook on life has been this way for so long, it takes some effort to notice if we're looking at it through a lens of negativity or positivity. Is the glass half full or half empty? When you call your mom, sister, or friend, What types of things do you find yourself talking about? Do you jump right into telling them all the crappy things that have happened since you talked last? Or do you start talking about the funny and encouraging and positive things in your life? I can remember the first time I ever thought about negativity. I was sitting at my grandma's table and she was chatting with my mom. My mom had asked how a certain relative was doing. My grandma replied that she didn't know. She had stopped calling her because every conversation was negative whether it was the relative complaining about her husband or how her kids were doing in school or even about her neighborhood, the entire conversation was negative and my grandma would hang up the phone and feel weighed down. It's so much nicer to be in a place mentally where our thoughts are generally positive. If you're just at the beginning of noticing and desiring to embrace a positive and appreciative attitude, here are a few steps that can have a big impact. Work on your outlook. Though we can get caught up in negative conversations from time to time, it's important to make sure we aren't the ones initiating those negative tones to the conversations. And we don't wanna be the ones that entertain negative thoughts all the time. Changing how we think takes time, but it can be done. When you notice a negative or complaining thought, immediately stop and force yourself to say something positive about that situation. For example, ah, my husband left his underwear on the floor again, so freaking annoying. Stop and force yourself to say something positive about your husband. He did the dishes last night so I can relax after a long day. I appreciate that. Notice the attitudes of people you're surrounded by. There are people in our lives that are negative. If I'm around them, it's easy for me to fall right into that and think of all the negative things going on in my life right now. If someone starts the conversation, it doesn't take long before it seems like we are trying to one-up one another with all the difficult situations we happen to be witness to or be a part of. Since I've started paying attention to this, I've learned to limit how much time I spend with people who are negative. Just like my grandmother who stopped calling her relative on a regular basis, sometimes we have to set boundaries for our mental well-being. It's not that we have to cut those people completely out of our lives, though in some cases that might be needed. Really, It's knowing how much time you can spend with that person and learning to step away when you need to. Journaling. When we take time to journal, it's allowing our minds to slow down and contemplate something. Most of our days are filled with busyness. We're entertained with music, videos, or distracted with texts, social media, and news. Giving your mind time to only sit and think, as well as having to articulate the thoughts into words, reveals things that we don't normally pay attention to. Here are a few questions to help you get started. Are my thoughts generally positive or negative? When I remark about things to people around me, are they generally positive or negative remarks? If they're negative, what can I think about or focus on to shift it to a positive thought? And how can I rephrase common thoughts so they are positive? 
Journaling can make a huge impact on our thought life. These questions are included in day 15 of my journaling course, Minimalist Mindset. Don't keep things bottled up. Just because we're talking about positive thinking doesn't mean it's wrong to have negative thoughts or complain about things. Life is hard. Things happen that are uncomfortable, difficult, and frustrating. Relationships can drive us crazy and some people can be extremely annoying. So let it out. Have a trusted person that can simply listen, preferably not someone who adds fuel to the fire, but someone you can be honest with. Vent, it's okay to feel those feelings. We don't wanna complain all the time and dwell on the that happens, but it's not healthy to pretend it doesn't happen either. Balance, pretty much all of life comes down to balance. Accept responsibility. No matter what is going on, nothing will change unless we accept the responsibility for the change. This doesn't mean that we look around at our cluttered home as a defeatist and say, it's my fault. Instead, it means that if you want it to change, it's your responsibility to do something to change it. Get rid of things, implement cleaning habits, change your shopping patterns. If we want our home to be a place we enjoy living in, it's up to us to make those changes. We can't expect the rest of the household to do it. It's not important to them. If it's important to you, then do it for yourself. If you want to think more positively, you have to accept responsibility for changing the way you're thinking. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy, but it definitely is worth it. It's so much nicer to be in a positive mental space. You just listened to the post titled How to Complain Less and Appreciate More by Rachel Jones of nourishingminimalism.com. And thank you to Rachel. She started her journey to minimalism way back in 2008 struggling with depression and horribly embarrassed by the messy state of her home. Her mission now is to help others turn their home into their own personal oasis. She has a lot to offer, including some helpful products. You can check it all out at nourishingminimalism.com. And I have that linked in this episode's description. I'm really glad she mentioned that it all starts with paying attention. It can be easy to tell you to complain less. It will make your life a lot better. And it's easy to think, oh yeah, I'll complain less starting now. But realizing when we're complaining is really the hardest part because we do it so quickly without even thinking. The same is true for our emotions in general. Our emotions are formed from our thoughts about something, but it all happens so quickly, thanks to the amazing power of our brains, that we don't even realize it's happening. So catching the act of complaining, or I should say the thought that then causes the act of complaining is key. She mentioned journaling, and that's definitely one exercise that can help. And surrounding yourself with people who don't complain is also a great strategy that doesn't require too much work on your part because those types can help you stay accountable and not complain. Instead of you trying to remember to complain less, they'll flat out tell you, hey, you're complaining again. But one thing she didn't mention that I tend to bring up the most is meditation because it's simply a practice of noticing what you're thinking and being able to disconnect from it. So that's another one I'd add to this list personally but different strokes for different folks. Meditation can be very difficult for a lot of people and frustrating. So see what works best for you. That'll do it for today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow where optimal life awaits.